noise. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm not feeling good and the weather compliments it, <laughs> I get challenged by lots of things that come at me because on the one hand, you know, I, I might not be feeling good because I'm suffering in some way. And uh, so that puts me in one frame of mind or one frame of reference. And then I sometimes have to evaluate whether or not I don't feel good or I'm suffering because of uh, my own consequence of actions, whether I've eaten right or slept right or done something to cause my body to wear me down or be worn down that, you know, I might be in ill health or something might be affecting me, you know, like either a flu or uh, some other external source. So I, I kind of go through these things, you know, and I think about them, you know, I don't spend too much time on them, I don't dwell on them. Usually what I do is I'll go through one of my devotionals and see what it's about. And if it says suffering, I go, oh, well, okay, I'm suffering. <laughs> and that's kind of what I did this morning was that I went, oh, well, this sucks. <laughs> and I laughed about it. I went, great, one of those days <laughs> we're suffering today. Okay, Lord, what do you want me to do with it? And I did. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do with it? So I waited a while and kind of got to where pain was tolerable, and then I shared a devotional, you know, and then I recognized that it was kind of weird because when I uploaded it, it was like all of a sudden it was stalled and wouldn't go, and then I ran into all kinds of things on the internet that my normal posting ministry was suddenly not happening as well as it normally does, and I just wrote it off as part of suffering, you know, and I figured, ah, well, you know, if you suffer as a Christian, you know, bless are you, Went on and on, you know, just kind of telling myself these things, not really asking God, because sometimes when I suffer, I get distracted, you know, how that happens, you know, you're trying to deal with it, and you're also trying to get away from it, because my flesh wants to run away from it, and my spirit wants to say, well, let's dig it, you know, and get into it and enjoy it for what it is, you're suffering, let it have its perfect work in you that you might accomplish things because you're in some kind of trial and tribulation so let it get worse so that you can get better <laughs> and my flesh is going uh-uh <laughs> give me the drugs <laughs> find relief <laughs> hide the head for the hills <laughs> so you know i went i ate you know tried to make sure that i got all my vitamins up or whatever it may be and you know i know i didn't sleep that well but yeah, you know, I kind of went through my checklist and my spiritual checklist too and kind of went, well, okay, you know. Then I kind of noticed that there were some weird things going on on the web, you know, just different things. You know, the normal people that fellowship with or that encourage me weren't there and there was some weird kind of like unusual things happening. And so I figured, well, okay, I didn't figure it out. It was not until just a few seconds ago that I had posted some things that I began to, as I started back into the ministry of posting, I recognized, oh, wait a minute, this is spiritual attack. It's obvious. Because soon it became revealed that certain things were being said or done, kind of like, you know, sounds Christian, but it isn't quite, you know, you know what that's like, you know, kind of, it's manipulative, it sounds like a Christian thing, but it really isn't, you know, and then you click on their link or site and it turns out to be, you know, oh, God, this is disgusting, you know, and get rid of it. Well, some of that happens, you know, and they post it on your web or you're on your page or they somehow get involved with your ministry and you kind of have to go, well, Lord, you know, I hate to tell the person, but, you know, you really can't do that on this site. You know, you site's for ministry, not for, you know, like promoting yourself or, you know, not, not for, you know, making money and not for getting, you know, click it, trick it, you know, that you click it on this web banner so that we can get all this much more money. You know, and Oh, click on all these banners because, after all, that's not asking for money. That's just getting money. Yeah, right. And so, you know, you tell the person that and, you know, I just, I tried to be polite and post it on my own site saying, look, freely receive, freely give. If you, if you got something off this website here, then you go into comments and you begin to ask people for money and send them to your site to get this, that, and the other thing from them, well, that's manipulation. That's, you know one of those profiteering things. That's the way the world works, the world in its ways. You know, sure, people can say you can't do it free, but wait a minute, it's me. 
it's free. You see, you can do it free because you pay for everything before you present it as an offering to the Lord. You don't go out and do for God and then try to get money for it. That's not how God operates. God said, freely you receive, freely give. After that, you have no rationale. You can say you get what you pay for, and that's the way I treat churches. Hey, a church can ask for money any time they want to. And I believe in it. I believe in a church asking for money for a church's needs. I believe that the church money goes to the church, and all that money that goes in it is for the church. I don't believe it's for God. I believe it's for the church. I believe that you get what you pay for. If you're paying for a pastor, you've got a paid pastor. If you're paying for the ministry, you've got a paid ministry. If you're paying for that book, you've got a paid book. Whatever it is, is bought and paid for. There's no way around that. If you gave money to it, you got money from it, you paid for it. So yes, you have the right, pardon me, to evaluate your purchase of what you paid for. Now, you can call it an offering. You can call it all you want to. You can call it everything you will. But if your name is on a check or your name is somehow connected and you got back reciprocity from it, then you bought and paid for that ministry, that church, and that pastor or that missionary or whoever it may be. Now, if you did it anonymously, hey, there's an offering. Because, you see, that's what Jesus said. That's what he meant by freely receive, freely give. You don't get tax deductions for your offerings. You don't get tax deductions for your tithings. That's supposed to be to God. And if it's rendering unto God the things that are God's and to Caesar the things that are Caesar, then sure, if you want a tax deduction, go out and buy a car or a house or a home or whatever. Or you know, donate to a bought and paid for, like I said, in your name. Uh, ministry that you want to give, like to a, a charitable organization that's going to, you know, help out the poor and starving in Nicaragua or something. But don't call it a tithe and don't call it an offering. Just admit that it's just a transaction. It's something you're doing because God has inspired you to care about other people. Now, if you happen to have money in your hand and you're going about and you're helping people, praise the Lord. Just pull it out of your pocket and give it to the person on the street. Because that is the way that Jesus described, don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing, or vice versa. So, as part of it is true, you can ask for what you want, but that's the religion part. You see, in the religion part, I agree, you can do what you want. Any church can ask for funds, can pass the plate, can do whatever they want to. When you're putting money in there and nobody can see it really, I mean, you know, they're sure maybe you're a next door person, but you know, you just kind of put it in there, you don't put it in some envelope, write your name on it, and get back, you know, some deduction, but you just kind of give it away or you put it in some box you know that's hidden in the back or something or you know that nobody knows who did what then yeah I would agree that is an offering that's something that's being done for the Lord and God will take that and use it in some way but when you send it in you know your check your money order your your tax deductible whatever for your 501 or 601 or whichever it is you know 603 or something you know credited source then sure it's safe to give money to them but at the same time, you should recognize that's what's bought and paid for, and you have your reward. And when somebody tried to give that you know, whole routine and make that part of my site, I got, even though I didn't feel good and I was in pain and suffering, I got physically ill. It was kind of like, it made me sick to my stomach, you know, to kind of look at what I've done in all the ministry that I've done so far with going out getting jobs and paying for everything that gets put on the websites, going out and getting money and taking every cent that we have to put into making sure no one ever has to pay for anything, going out and working so that we can pay for the ministry so that way the ministry is free, to always get the avocation so that the vocation, get the vocation so the avocation that isn't required of taking money from people and then I see someone, you know, manipulating that, you know, in comments of all things, and I think, Lord, that's sick. And God said, yeah, but that's the way of the world. And you see, others can, but I cannot. Others may, but I may not. Because God wanted to do something different with me 
because I've always lived at the mercy and grace of everyone around me. When I was dying, you know, thank God that you know I had benefits from my military experience. When I was overseas and I was in Jerusalem and I couldn't even get to a hospital and they wouldn't take care of me because I didn't have ten thousand dollars, you know, to pay for some hospital, you know, in the Israeli side, a charitable Arab organization gave me ostomy supplies. Go figure. No questions asked. Gave them to me. When I was miserably suffering, I had open sores and wounds on my side, and I was like, just really, you know, like, wit's end. And at the time, unfortunately, you know, Jewish side, sorry, no can do, you know, you're a tourist. You still got your tourist classification. Now, later I went to work in Israel and wound up getting, you know, health bennies covered because I was considered a green card holder, <laughs> so to speak, uh, met the bell. But um, it was interesting, you know, was that I could see how wrong and right and why God takes care of us if we will trust Him. Now, God allowed me to go through these experiences so that I could make that statement and show that it can be done free, freely receive, freely give. Someone else may come along and say, well, that's not my experience. And I'd say, yes, I know. That's not your experience. Your experience has to be true to what God is doing with you. Some other person may be a valid missionary and they may sit down and get together with their board of missionary supporters, you know, and have this criteria that they set up and this explanation and a full, you know, dissertation of how they work it all out and in that religious extremely organized way God blesses too you know it's not saying God can't use it I'm just saying we identify it for what it is bluntly according to scripture and so that's what I told the person I said look I don't mind that you do what you do on your side that's okay I'm not I don't have a problem with it being on your side or as a pastor you know if it was a pastor coming in I'd say I don't mind what you do in your church but when you come to a site that's already free and it's freely given and freely received and it's already been invested for years that way and the scriptures are all there and it's obvious and people know that and expect that and then you go and do something, you know, sneaky, it's just, just wrong. So anyways, my day was kind of going like that and I was going, well, praise the Lord, you know, God, now, now I am being challenged in my attitude and my actions because if I lose my perspective and I don't keep in mind that you are allowing me to go through this suffering to cause in me a change of my persona as well as maybe something else going on that I don't know anything about and that the reason why I'm suffering today is also to be tested by these challenges that come at me like fiery darts because I'm kind of weak in state and to see if I'll turn it over to you then Lord what's going on? So then God said read your devotion. So I said, you know, I kind of started to say, but I did, you know, I did read one or two, you know, and I read them and then recorded. And then I read two more when I didn't feel good later. Then I got to this one. <laughs> I have seven devotionals I read per day. And it'll be eight when I get Chuck's, when I can afford it. <laughs> Needless to say, I, I have to watch my pennies. <laughs> Penny pincher, you know, to get Chuck's devotional book. And uh, then I'll start recording it because... I believe that everything that I purchase, you know, technically for self, I'm really purchasing for the ministry and I use it adamantly in the ministry immediately, you know, otherwise I don't buy it, you know, it's like, no, nah, I'm not selfish, you know, I gave that up years back. But, oh, uh, but, um, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> it's like, and you go, huh. <laughs> I had these pains in a long time. But praise the Lord, God took me back to you know, my devotion. I mean, he said, read your devotion. So I did, you know, and I opened up and I went, linger in God's presence. Oh, be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for him and patiently lean yourself upon him. And I went, cool. I like that. You know, because I was so carried away with wanting to keep, you know, caught up with, you know, the ministry because I do like, well, I don't know. 30 or so odd devotionals and probably 15 to 
20 pictorial um, representations of the gospel or, or Jesus or relationship in some way, you know, some visual. Um, I call it a visual break, meaning that I try to use something inspiring, you know, pictorial ins inspiration between the devotionals, you know, to inspire people. And then I do probably, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, five or ten postings of uh, news and events, you know. Oh, well, five, let's see, five, so times five. Every, every news event has five or seven with it, so it would be probably 25, so... Well, I don't know. Usually every day is probably about 50 to 60 postings that I'm doing. The research, checking, praying, posting, pasting, you know, then writing up comments on and sometimes, you know, uh, copy, paste and, you know, uh, edit them and put them into place, you know, and put them out on the web, you know. There's a lot of work, you know. It takes a lot of time. And so sometimes when I feel down, I get a little pulled back. You know, God seems to, you know, and say, Michael, slow down, stop, quit. And then finally goes, bam, I go, okay, what, huh, where, huh, Ooh, oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, I'll admit it, you know, I'm like you. I get something good going, you know, and I want to do more, you know. <laughs> when it's enjoyable, I want to do more. If it's cake, I want to eat it too. You know, if it's ice cream, I want it on top. You know, give me give me the chocolate syrup to add to that, and I'll go for it. You know, hey, I'm like you. You know, I just want to enjoy what I'm doing with Jesus instead of arguing about what people are doing about Jesus. And I think you know, when God brings the suffering along, you know, I like that because it does bring me back to, and I just kind of lean back, just like I am now. You know, it's almost like you know, leaning like John did, I'm sure, at Jesus' side, and you just kind of nuzzle up to him, you know, and just kind of shut up, you know. <laughs> and you just kind of lay there for a while, you know, and you think, boy, Lord, I like this. And then you get that thought, but you're suffering. And you think, not really. And you think, well, there you are. I say, well, not really. I have these little conversations going on back and forth because I think part of me is the flesh and I think part of me is the spirit and it kind of talks back and forth. I'm split personality. <laughs> and I kind of go, well, you know, it's kind of kind of nice though. Maybe the suffering stuff is worth it. And the other part of me goes, uh-huh. And I'll go, uh-huh. And I'll go, uh-huh. <laughs> And then, you know, I'll be sitting there thinking all these thoughts, and then the Lord will just kind of, like, huh? You're not resting. Oh! <laughs> and he knows when I'm not being still. So in today's word that I got from the Lord, just to share with you, and, you know, this is my wife's devotional, so I really enjoyed it, is... Uh, be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for Him. Patiently lean yourself upon Him. From Psalms 37.7 Sometimes we just need to hang out in God's presence. We need to sing and worship Him and soon we will enjoy the freshness of His marvelous wonder. Sometimes we just need to be with Him. When we sense God is working in people's hearts, we don't worry about how or what our agenda is or what we should do. We just need to enjoy watching how he moves. We set everything aside just to enjoy his awesome move and how he's touching people's lives. And we need to always be mindful of that. That in stillness and in quietness shall be your strength. Lots of times when you are feeling bad and you come to the Lord, you will be refreshed. Sometimes the sick, when they come to the Lord, will be healed. During times of worship and during times of waiting on the Lord, God can move in marvelous and magical ways that you never thought He would do according to His Spirit and His will. So if you feel discouraged, He will cheer you up. If you feel tired, He will strengthen you. Just sit in His presence and wait for Him to move in your life. Now, I don't know if you're going through it. I don't know if you're going to go do it. You know, me... I know that I'm still going to 
do some ministry today. I'm going to accomplish some things in my way. I'm still going to <laughs> feel some of the oh, aches and pains of just the reality of suffering as a person who lives in this world, just like you. And maybe I have a few extra things added on. <laughs> but the one thing I can share with you that is beautiful beyond all words, too marvelous for words, you know, I don't do what you probably do a lot of. I don't listen to a lot of Christian music. I don't play Christian music all day long. I don't have earbuds because I have a lot of songs that I, I sing in my, my head all the time. They're songs of remembrance. They're songs of joy. They're songs of rejoicing. They're songs that bring scripture to life for me. They're songs that I remember and retain. And I like that part of me because it's always singing in some way. So I do have a song in my heart and I always have things that come to mind when I sing them. And so I don't always you know, just bombard myself with a lot of what maybe you guys do with either K-Love or some other, you know, Christian venue, your CDs. And your because a lot of songs for me have real in-depth meaning and they touch the part of my soul, like the part that I need it when I need it. And so when I sing them, it's almost like I, I restore to the Lord. You know, it's like that song that says, we were like those who dreamed a dream, you know, that when we remember the days of old, coming forth with songs of deliverance. And I don't fault people for having, you know, huge volumes of Christian music, but I always wonder, do you know any of them? I mean, you know, are any of them applicable to your life? Do you sing them yourself without a CD or tape? Because you see, sometimes, Christian distraction can also distract you away from the attraction and the main attraction of Jesus. It's easy to be caught up into ministry, like me, or caught up into other things that are Christianese, you know, do this, do that, hear this, hear that. Sometimes, if suffering comes your way, maybe God is just trying to tell you to wait. Be still. Lean on, if you can picture it, or if you can feel it, even as I can feel like on my back. Just lean on the, the chest of Jesus. Just lay in his lap. Just know that when you're hurting, he'll wrap his arms around you, and you'll feel it. And it'll break your heart. It'll break you down. It'll bring you to the reality of knowing a personal God in an intimate way.